All right, nerds, how are we doing? So today we're going to talk about energy profiles and activation energy. Uh, these are two separate ideas, but they link together. You'll see so how in a minute. So this is our goal. Our goal is to be able to determine the energetic nature of a reaction from its energy profile, so be able to look at it and, and work out where it is. And we also want to be able to sketch the reaction pathway in an energy diagram or an energy profile. Now, activation energy is a part of that diagram, part of that profile. This is our vocabulary. If we could just pause the video here and write this down, uh, we'll have this to refer back to as we're going. And it's quite a big one today, which I apologize for, but you'll see that all these words matter. Take particular, um, take particular attention to reaction coordinate. And reaction coordinate in this case is referring on our profile here. This is an energy profile, which you'll see in a minute. Um, the point along this line. So essentially a function of time. So activation energy, right? So if we've got our little dynamite down here, activation energy is what actually makes that safe. Like dynamite's fairly stable until you push the plunger. And when you push the plunger, a little charge goes down and applies enough energy to raise it above the activation energy and kaboom. So the activation energy is an energetic barrier to chemical reactions. So it stops the chemical reaction from occurring, sort of. Uh, the symbol is capital E with a subscript capital A. Uh, the SI unit is joules per mole, although typically we run in kilojoules per mole. And it's necessary because basically chemical species will exist fairly stably. Like the, the bonds are already there, they're formed. And for a reaction to occur, we need to break those bonds into our individual atoms and then allow new bonds to form. And we can see on our energy profile here, we've got enthalpy, which is the difference between the energy stored in the reactants to the energy stored in the products. And this first hump to the, the part that we have to get over for the reaction to happen in the first place, that is our activation energy. So uh, now that we know about activation energy, let's look at energy profiles. This is a typical energy profile. We see we've got our reactants. This is the energy stored in the reactants, so in the bonds. And then we add energy to the system, which gets it up to its transition state, which means the activation energy has been achieved. And then it drops down to either above or below this line, but it's still always a drop uh, to our products. So we've actually got two types of graphs here. We've got an exothermic reaction in which we can see there is more energy stored in the bonds of the reactants than there is in the products. So, yeah, so it's a larger one there. And that's our enthalpy gap there. And in our endothermic reaction, we see that there is more energy stored in the products than there are in the reactants. And here's our enthalpy, and energy has been absorbed. So on the y-axis of our graph, we see the energy within the system in joules per mole or kilojoules per mole. On the x-axis, on the x-axis, even better, we see the reaction progress or the reaction coordinate. Um, and these units are a function of time. It's time in some way, shape, or form. Uh, the activation energy is where that transition state's achieved. So we can see over here, uh, we have our A and our BC compound. And when they hit the transition state, they've been broken into separate species, separate atoms. Um, and then they're ready to be remade. And this is always an exothermic process. So to break bonds, we always have to put energy in. And then when the new bonds are formed at the end, as it goes, so as the reaction coordinate moves to the end of the reaction, new bonds have been formed. And this is always an endothermic process. So we see that we can have um, an exothermic reaction or an endothermic reaction. And in both cases, both cases, Breaking of the bonds is exothermic. Reforming of bonds is endothermic because energy is absorbed. And in an endothermic reaction, it's just less energy than was released or put in in the first place. And over here, it's more energy than was put in in the first place. So again, this gap is the enthalpy and shows if the overall process has been exothermic, which is energy released or joules released, or endothermic joules absorbed. I hope that made a lot of sense. If it didn't, put any questions you have in the comments below and we'll get back to you as soon as we can. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe and we'll see you next time. Bye now.